And so from the old favourite to a fresh-faced A-level student who at Wimbledon burst onto the scene and lit up our screens by reaching the fourth round. It was clear a star was born, but even Hollywood wouldn't have dared write the script that followed. She is next on our list, the teenage sensation Emma Raducanu. I was Team Nightingale. We won Sports Day every year. I was five years old when I first started playing. When I realised I could beat the boys, that's when I first started realising, OK, I'm actually not bad. Huh. It's me. I didn't know that. When she joined us in Year 7, we knew that she was pretty good. GCSE English right here. From a young age, I've always wanted to do well in everything I do. I was front row, so there was no cheating going on. <laughs> yeah, this is where I did my exams. It's extraordinary to look at that journey from sort of A-levels into the second week of Wimbledon and look like she was having a great time. British tennis has a new star. Things didn't end the way that she would have liked. Miss Raducanu is not able to continue the match. After Wimbledon, I knew exactly what I needed to do. To get to New York, it was the first time she'd ever played qualifying at a Grand Slam. Each match that went by, I thought, why can't I win this match? Match after match, set after set, no let up. No qualifier has ever done this before. We'll now face Leila Fernandez in an all teenage final. It's me or her, so why not me? It was incredible. Radicanu down the line to win the first set. The second set was equally as challenging and a little bit dramatic. Break that point! Took a bit of a tumble there, Emma Radicanu. I just zoned out. It's a pretty surreal experience. Really unfortunate timing. And I just wanted to hit ace because I was like too scared to hit the ball. Emma Renacano is the US Open champion. It's one of the most incredible achievements in our sport. She was tipped for this and she's done it. Who is Emma Raducanu? Emma Raducanu, 19 year old from Bromley. That's who she is. I mean, there's nothing else to it. And it's lucky Emma is so down to earth because from all that excitement, she comes back with a bump to the reality of modern life, testing positive for COVID and now in isolation in a hotel. But she can join us now live from Abu Dhabi. And hello there, Emma. How are you feeling, first of all? Hey, everyone. I'm doing well, thank you. I hope you're all safe and healthy and enjoying the holiday season. Um, I've no idea whether you were watching Sports Personality of the Year this time last year, but now here you are on the list. Um, when you look back at what you've achieved and the belief, where, where did that come from, that invincibility? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty surreal. I've always watched Sports Personality and just to be nominated among the other great nominees is a real honour. So uh, the self-belief, I feel like I've just what, had that as a child growing up. It's been instilled into me from a young age. And I think sport gave me that inner belief and confidence. Emma, you said that you're still that kid from Bromley. But I mean, since that win, you are a global superstar. I mean, we saw you at the Met Gala. Not everyone gets that invite. <laughs> How have you taken it all in? Uh, I feel like the complete same and everyone near me is definitely the same and uh, keeping me in my place 100%. But um, it's been great how everyone's been so welcoming and positive when I got back home and around. But uh, yeah, nothing's really changed in terms of my mindset. And what about your mum and dad? Because they weren't able to be with you when you did have that win. What about their reaction to their daughter being a superstar now? Well, my parents are never one to really make a big deal out of anything that I do that's good. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, they, they've been normal. Nothing too big, nothing too low. That's just the way they brought me up. And number one, obviously, you want to dedicate your life to playing tennis. What are the targets that you're setting yourself in 2022? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I just want to look back at the end of 2022 and think that I've improved in some way and also learn because it'll be my first actual year on the tour. So I've got a lot of learning to do. And uh, yeah, it might take longer to recover, but we'll see. Um, I'm looking forward to getting started. You've said that one of the keys to your success in New York was being able to stay present. Can you just tell us a bit more about how you achieved that? 
Yeah, I think that I was really focused on one point at a time and I didn't really know the power that I held, that I would hold. Um, you know, Tim, he played such a great role in New York and he was really instilling that into me every single day. So, uh, yeah, I'm really grateful that he was there and part of the journey too. Well, I certainly hope that that magic, that trick, that belief in yourself, the ability to stay present works for you again because it's just been a wonderful treat to, to watch your...